Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, The Fen Treasure. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvair Ronnie. And uh, as of our last video on Forest Fen, as usual, we got tons and tons and tons of comments and emails. And so we're back again today to share some of those with you. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Ronnie, I have Tony Driver. We hear from him all the time. He yep. says, hey, Ron and Lou, I'm sitting here enjoying another great show with my coffee. Ronnie, thanks for reading my comment about my belief that the chest will never be stumbled upon. Yep. I hope to prove that point shortly. The one who finds that chest, uh, here's where he's making a hint, will be in seventh heaven. Ooh. In the famous words of Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing. <laughs> Remember that from Hogan? Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, thank you for that. Yes. Um, yes, uh, Ronnie says that um, it, it'll, it'll, there's just no possibility that somebody would stop. I, you know what? You think that, but somebody off the beaten trail going to pee behind a rock. Who's to say exactly? I mean, eh, very likely nobody's going to be in that area. But eh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all my, all my avenues open. Okay. And along the same line, this is uh, from Mark Connor. Uh, he says the book was very well written. No one has found it yet, have they? <laughs> right. So maybe Good it's point. maybe it's not that well written. Uh, he also says nobody will stumble over it. People will go, will go out of their way to walk around it um and that could be the that could be the problem is that it's in an area that people are not not going to frequent and so yeah maybe you won't get tripped over all right ronnie this one from lost in space and lost in space and i have been going back and forth on a couple of different things here um we agree we disagree we agree blah, blah, blah. and speaking of the book Listen to this, okay? Please do not tune away right now. Lost in Space says, this is what you do. Order the Thrill of the Chase book with a message to request a doodle. Forrest Fan usually honors these. Let him know by email your order is coming. For a mere $35, you could get a signed copy of a great book that you can read in an hour or two. You get to discuss anything you may have noticed in it, if anything. You quash the naysayers, and you get to share the doodle with your viewers when it arrives. If Forrest knows this, it may be a hintful doodle. Ooh. Of course, he will never tell if any doodle means anything at all, right. but maybe it's a win, 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 and a good investment if I ever saw one. So let me read my response to him. Lost in space. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. You should be a mediator. <laughs> I think I'm going to break down and do it. Get a few people off of our backs. If not an investment, definitely a tax write-off. Yep. Thanks so much for watching our little show. So lost in space, thank you, but uh, we're going to do that. I know that makes a lot of you folks happy. We're, we're going to do it. Yep. And Ronnie even said to me he's going to check out the library and yeah. see if he can get it there. See okay? if my local library has So we're on it. You know what? Leave us alone. And then I'll mail that one to Forrest and see if he'll autograph it. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, and you know what I'll do? As long as it comes back before it's due. <laughs> yeah. Don't dilly-dally, Forrest. <laughs> before you send it to him, I'll just make copies on the copy machine of each page. There you go. And I'll send that to him. <laughs> All right. That's a great way to go about it. I think it is. Uh, okay, this one is uh, yesterday from Point Vlog. Okay. He says, over 3 million people visit Rocky Mountain National Park every year, and it's no secret why. There is virtually no limit to the outdoor adventures in Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. Never been there. I've only passed through Colorado uh, very briefly. Um, but I think... I mean, for for no if for no other reason, I think that there's a lot of people out there beating the bush looking for, you know, looking for Forrest Fenn's little hidden treasure. So, yeah. Well, you know, we go back and forth with Anon and on. 
I love a non anon. I know. Yeah. Uh, here's the most recent comment. Uh, I think this is uh, based as we're talking about the book. At one point, several months back, Ronnie and I had mentioned that we didn't think that the books were, were well written. Now, here's the thing. We really, at this point, should not be judging that. We, the reason we said that, and, and this is the God's honest truth, is that's the feedback that we were getting from our viewers. Uh, they would leave for us and say, you know, don't bother buying the book. It's just not very good. Right. And it wasn't just one person that said that. It was multiple people that said, don't waste your time. It's a waste of money. And so that's the direction that we went. Well, and, and they'd also said that it was full of grammatical errors. Right, I remember uh, that. Punctuation errors. Spelling. Yeah, spelling. So, you know what? Does that make the book any less readable? I don't think so. And I think we've also changed directions on this whole Fen Treasure situation. Uh, in the beginning, a lot, of a, a lot of people were mocking us for taking up the, the issue on our show. Right. Uh, but, you know, I think we've come a long way on this. And I think that we bring, bring you stuff that other shows don't. Um, I can't, well, no, I, I'm just going to get to this. Anon, Anon, and we apologize to Forrest for those comments on the last episode. Absolutely. Right, yep. okay. So Anon, Anon says, well done. I'm sure F appreciates it. Respect for that. Uh, I'm commenting now after seeing the rest. I simply call it straight. I could like you guys and still disagree with the way you handle something. It's all good. You know what? I think that's the key. Uh, man, wouldn't the world be a great place if, even if you disagreed with somebody, you could still get along with them? Yeah, you know, and the other thing, too, is that um, we've, we've warmed up. Uh, He's yeah. warmed up to us, I guess yep. I should say. And, you know... If you just tune in for the first time and you watch, you probably don't get what it is that Ronnie and I do. Right. That's different from the other shows. And that's fine. However, if you stick around, I think you'll come to like each of us. And, and probably for both, for different reasons. So, anyway, thank you and on and on. You're all right with us. You're A plus in our book. Okay. Now this, I'm listing this as the comment of the week. Okay. This is from Jimmy Fast. All right. He says, ha, ha, ha. Bill Gorman is nothing like George Washington, except for the fact that they both need wooden teeth. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, please don't pour any more fire on the Lou, Lou Gallagher, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill Gorman. Bill, Bill Gorman, yeah. Don't pour any more fire on that problem, okay? I don't need it. Bill is, he's had a tough go, and probably still is. And, hey, uh, who's to say if he's right or wrong? But, you know. Live your life. You be you, Bill. Right. You Edna Perviance and Karen Reinhardt, right? Be careful, LOL. There are a lot of hostile Fen followers out there and a handful of sincere searchers. I'm in the category of armchair East Coast, using up spare time. Sort of a searcher, but sincere. Love your vlogs. You know that. It's all in the way one looks at it, hidden in plain sight, maybe. Another witty vlog, men, and then she leaves two sacks of cash. Oh. I mean, it's money. Well, Our show is money. Thank you. Thanks, Edna. Yep. Uh, this is from McLovin, which I, I absolutely, if you've seen that uh, the movie, you would love the, his handle. Um, Forrest, he says, Forrest, go ahead and do a Men Are So Smart interview. You don't even have to give out any clues or hints. You watch your Miss Piggy comments, fellas. We're from the same town, kind of. Uh, you had to go see what us town folk do in Kermit. Do to Kermit. Oh, do to Kermit, yes. <laughs> uh, why do you think you talk so funny? We had to choke him out. Hey, uh, that's I not very nice. Yep. Uh, in all seriousness, good job, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a couple replies here. Let me see. Oh. Uh, I wrote back to him. I said, wouldn't that be something? I'd call the episode Men, Beer, and Forrest Fenn. Yep. And Forrest says, and this is from McLovin again, Forrest did say he drinks wine once a year. Maybe this will be the once a year. Hell yeah. And he says, get him the cheapest one. We're kind of leaning towards Two Buck Chuck from yeah. uh, Trader Joe's. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'd enjoy that. Yeah. 
James Devine says, Finn will have a good time with you guys, but stay away from asking for clues. We've already said we would do that. Yeah. He will confront you. There's probably 10 videos out there to watch him. Please ask him what music he really likes, because I would like to know. Well, that prompted last week's show where we did the top five fan related search songs, I think yeah. it was, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I let James know that there will be a mix CD available. <laughs> It'll be on the website. <laughs> yeah. Look for it on the website. Uh, this one from uh, Terrence Withers. Uh -huh. This is interesting. It says, You will never find that box. It's cemented in a mountain in Wyoming. 10,000 years. In order to begin looking for it, you must first have a starting point, GPS coordinates. Not a single searcher has ever come close to the treasure chest, not even remotely close. The starting point uh, could be Yellowstone as a Yellowstone, as a, a line drawn from Yellowstone, but I'm not sure. I can tell you this much. Look at the big picture where warm waters halt. Uh, Dinwoody Glacier. Hmm. Okay, well, we need to look that up. Yep. However, Forrest has said that people have been close, very close to the treasure. So, you're, you, Terrence, I think you're a little bit off, but uh, I obviously nobody's found it. But Forrest says people have been close, very close. Okay, so uh, Jason Northface who just began watching our program last week or the week before. Uh, he heard us talking about how Mr. Fenn has replied to my email and how Ronnie and I would really like to do a show with him. And, uh, you know, in our opinion, it would be different than all the other shows that have attempted this. Uh, and like I said, that's what it would be. It'd be me and Ronnie and Forrest sitting around. If he wants to have some two buck chuck, that's fine. Ronnie and I will have a couple of 80, what is it? Uh, 805s. 805s. Yep. And we'll just sit there and talk and laugh and have fun together and appreciate, appreciate each other as men hanging out. He says, Jason says, now just call his house, set up the interview, asking what time we're going to be there, have a date already scheduled. We will be there by nine Thursday afternoon and he'll do it. Wow. I think he would. We got to get there, though, Ronnie. Right. Um, and then Jason goes on to say, and you know another thing? See how this is, I pointed. That's how important this is. <laughs> you know another thing I appreciate about you guys? Ooh, I, like, I like what I'm hearing so far. You don't ask us to subscribe and hit the like button before the show even starts. At least you wait until the end. Wow. You know, we've tossed that around, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you were telling me that you watch this guy from that works at a Chevrolet dealership, and he does that a lot, and he's got tons of likes. Yeah, you know, he in the beginning of the show he opens that way. Yep. So I don't know. I I, I know we've done it both ways. There may be something to it. We're not doing this for the likes or the subscribes or you uh, know it's, or money. Right. Lord knows that. Yeah. So this is this is not one of the comments on this video, but this is an email that I got, but it's from somebody that didn't wish to be named. But he is saying that Forrest is now extremely hard of hearing and that we should send him a list of our questions ahead of time. You know, we would have a laundry list of questions. Let him pick out the questions he wants to answer and he could then prepare his answers and it would be, you know, because I know my mom was unbelievably hard of hearing. And it sounds like you're yelling at the person so that they can hear you. And we don't certainly don't want to upset any Forest Fen fans by sounding like we're yelling. So I think that's a really, that's a kind of a great way to go about it. Plus, it lets, it lets him pick the questions he's comfortable in answering. And we could always leave it open and say, hey, if there are any questions that you would think that your viewers want asked, write them down. We'll ask those as well. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate that email. And I think, th and of course, Lou is a masterful editor. And so uh, it would come out very classy. Uh, it w it's it's going to put Forrest in a good light. It's, you know, we're not trying to... Uh, 
you know. Where it's not a roast. It's not a roast, no. We're, it's going to be unbelievably respectful. And again, we're not searchers, but we are facilitators. Yeah. So that would be more of what our, our interview would be about. Okay, so you'll remember a couple of shows back, I, I mentioned that Forrest had replied to my email. And I was, I was excited. You know, I was like a kid in a candy store. I, I couldn't believe it. And so we're trying to put this together. Uh, what I'd like to have you do is I'd like to find out in the comments below what you would like to have us ask Forrest. Okay, and then we'll compile a list of these things, and Ronnie and I'll go through them while we're trying to make this Forrest Fenn uh, show happen. And um, that way you're involved as well. You know, and maybe we can get some of the answers to your questions. But if you're, if you're asking a question about a clue, it ain't going to happen. We're not going to do that. No. We're not going to be there for that. All right, so leave those below. Uh, Ronnie, let's cut it short. I will tell you that on our next show, uh, we will be taking your email questions. So uh, as you can see, our email addresses are going by on the bottom of the screen right here now. And um, you can email either Ronnie or me, or you can email both of us. Yep. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember, as you can see it. Uh, so uh, that much having said, um, thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted on this Forrest Fenn interview. Uh, if you all want to encourage him to do the interview with our show, wow. let him know. Let us know. Uh, Mr. Fenn, if you're watching this program and you've gotten this far, um, you send us another email. Yeah. Um, what should I reply to Forrest Fenn? I'd like those comments, too. I'd love to see those below. You guys are so creative, you know, all of your comments make up an entire show that we do. Yep. Pretty, uh, pretty entertaining, if you ask me. All right, that'll do it. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. Thanks for watching this episode of The Fen Treasure with Men Are So Smart.